Hello friends, good morning all of you. So welcome to my channel. Uh, please subscribe to my channel for new videos. And in the previous class we have seen the functional areas of cerebral cortex. So in this video we are going to see the clinical aspects of the functional areas of the cerebral cortex means if any lesions are present in any functional area so what are the complications we can see that we are going to discuss in this particular class so here already we have seen that cerebrum so sulci gyri already have discussed about it so here you can see the lateral sylvian fissure and here you can identify the central sulcus so moving forwards and this is the medial surface of cerebrum so i'm just explaining you so here are the functional areas uh, now we are going to discuss one by one from first we'll discuss the motor areas then we'll come to the sensory areas i mean first we'll discuss about the frontal lobe then we'll go to the parietal then temporal and after that we can discuss about the occipital lobe then coming to this first one is the primary motor area as we have discussed about this primary motor area that is area number four so what happens if any lesion present in this particular area area number four so the lesions of the primary motor area in one hemisphere produce flaccid paralysis of the extremities of the opposite half of the body called as hemiplasia okay so the masticatory laryngeal pharyngeal, upper facial, extraocular muscles are spared for being represented bilaterally. Remember this flaccid paralysis may happen of the extremities because of the lesions present in this area number four. Okay, this is area number four. Then moving to this next one is then going to the supplementary motor area. Supplementary motor area which we can identify at the yeah, here you can see that supplementary motor area uh, that is called as pre medial frontal gyrus medial frontal gyrus so if any lesion present in this area lesion of the supplementary motor area produce bilateral flexor hypotonia with no paralysis or paralysis okay then <clears throat> coming to the premotor area so first we have discussed about area number four then we can see we have seen the supplementary motor area then we are going to see the a premotor area premotor area or secondary motor area it's also called as if any lesion is present in this area uh, it produces difficulty in the performance of skilled movements okay so that's about the premotor area then we are moving to the frontal eyelid here you can see the frontal eyelid area so lesions of this frontal eyelid eye field of one hemisphere cause the two eyes to deviate to the side of the lesion and an inability to turn the eyes to the opposite side so the involuntary tracking movement of the eyes when following moving objects is unaffected since the lesion does not involve the visual cortex of occipital lobe okay that is about the lesion in the prefrontal area or frontal eyelid area okay then moving to the motor speech area so where we can identify the motor speech area so motor speech area which is present at the 44 and the 45 area number 44 and 45 here you can identify if any lesion is present in this area the lesions of the motor speech area of Broca result in loss of ability to produce speech that is expressive aphasia it is also called as motor aphasia so the patients who will retain the ability to think about the words they wish to say they can write the words and they can understand their meaning when they see or hear them Thus, although the language is understood, it cannot be expressed in speech. Even though there is no paralysis of the muscles of lips, tongues and the vocal cords, etc. Okay, so they could not speak, but they can understand and they can write the things. Okay, that is about the lesions, if the lesions are present in the Broca area, area number 44 and 45. Then moving to the functional areas in the parietal lobe. 
functional areas in the peritoneal means we are moving back behind the central sulcus we can identify the post central gyrus this all sensory areas okay so area number 3 1 and 2 so if any lesion is present in this primary sensory area lead to the loss of appreciation of exteroceptive and proprioceptive sensations from the opposite half of the body the crude pain temperature and touch sensations often return but this is believed to be due to the functions of thalamus okay so remember the appreciation loss of appreciation of exteroceptive and proprioceptive sensations from the opposite half of the body that is a body area number 3 1 and 2 that is primary sensory area then secondary sensory area secondary sensory area or sensory association area that is area number behind this behind this we can identify area number 5 7 here you can see the 5 7 if any lesions are present in this two areas lesions of this area result in inability to recognize or identify an object by its feel okay the condition this condition is called as tactile agnosia tactile agnosia or astrognosis astrognosis then moving to the sensory speech area area number 40 moving down from 5 and 7 in the parietal lobe so this is area number 40 that is about the vernix area vernix area so if any lesion of the vernix area lesion of the vernix area the dominant hemisphere produces loss of ability to understand the spoken and written speech so where when we see the 44 and 45 broca's area if any lesion present in this areas they can write they can receive the things but here here what's happening is it is loss of ability to understand the spoken and written speech so this condition is called as receptive sensory aphasia receptive sensory aphasia since broca's area is unaffected the expressive speech is and impaired and the individual can produce a fluent speech however he is unaware of the meaning of the words he uses consequently he uses incorrect words or even non existent words the person is unaware of his mistakes to the others his speech sounds like uh, an incomprehensible foreign language okay that is about the lesions if they are present in the vernix area then going to the other area that is area number 41 and 42 so here area number 41 and 42 so these are primary auditory areas so if any lesion present in this area unilateral lesions unilateral lesions of the primary auditory area result in slight loss of hearing because it receives auditory input from the cochlea of both sides but loss will be greater in the opposite ear bilateral lesions of the primary auditory areas cause complete cortical deafness complete cortical deafness then secondary auditory area that is area number 22 just below this area number 22 if any lesion is present in this area number 22 the lesion of the secondary auditory area result in an inability to interpret the meaning of the sounds heard and the patient may experience word deafness called as auditory verbal agnosia auditory verbal agnosia that is about the uh, functional areas lesions if any lesions are present there then moving to the functional areas of the occipital lobe occipital lobe so lesions if any lesion of the primary visual area result in loss of vision if any lesion present in the 17 area number 17 in the occipital lobe causes a uh, primary visual area result in loss of vision in the opposite visual field called as cross homonymous hemianopia the unilateral lesions of the superior wall of uh, post calcarean sulcus result in inferior quadrantic hemianopia whereas lesions involving the inferior wall of post calcarean sulcus if you want to see the post calcarean sulcus here you can identify that so here you can see the post calcarean sulcus behind that is a post calcarean sulcus so <clears throat> inferior wall of the post calcarean sulcus result in superior 
quadratic hemianopia so the most common cause of these lesions are vascular accidents tumors and injuries from gunshot wounds okay so that is about the area number 17 18 and 19 as well then other lesions so there is area number 18 and 19 what happens if the lesions are present in the 18 and 19 so that we have seen in 17 and now if you see the if any lesions are present in the 18 and 19 surrounding the area number 17 causes uh, result in a loss of ability to recognize the objects visual agnosia okay visual agnosia seen in the opposite field of vision okay that is about area number 18 and 19 okay so these are the clinical aspects of the functional areas of cerebral cortex if you have any doubts once again you just verify in your textbooks and all thank you guys